from Legacy United. It's the G1 Universe Soundwave, along with the G1 Universe Decepticon Rumble, Buzzsaw, and Ravage. Yes, this is the brand new box that is basically a bunch of repaints, but some of them were a little hard to find. At least the main one was. And this sold out super fast because, you know, it's Soundwave and you can never have too many Soundwaves. And so I'm going to go through this and we may even compare it to uh, the other versions of these characters just so we can compare the deco. Because that's pretty much what's changed is the deco, really. Maybe some hips, we'll see. But if you are new to the channel, I'm Captain Kyle. Welcome aboard. If you're a longtime watcher, thanks so much for coming back and prepare for some communication about Soundwave. All right, be right back. So yes, this basically includes the Voyager version of Soundwave that was released during the Netflix line, though with some redeco, along with a repaint of Laserbeak, so that we finally have a buzzsaw in modern mold, a repaint of the Ravage, and Rumble, because he's blue, but in the kind of original G1 frenzy colors. And that's from the studio series, so we're mixing and matching here a little bit. But let's get this guy out of his package and see what's inside. Well, I think you know what's inside. Instructions. Shitty piece of paper. And we'll put you over there. And there he is, Soundwave on his cardboard prison, three cassettes, and some paper. And it's not Autobot paper, so that's at least good. I mean, still, Decepticon paper, how tough is that, Hasbro? Well, let's get him off of here. His little friends, say hello to his little friends. All right, so there is Soundwave. He was packaged in his robot mode, sans accessories. We also have Ravage in his tape mode. Buzzsaw in his take mode and rumble though I notice he is slightly mistransformed when you're supposed to transform you're supposed to turn the head around so it's not visible but it's uh, slightly mistransformed in the package so we'll fix that later instructions are nice though I can probably figure this out it's not my first rodeo with these guys and let's see what accessories we have I'm guessing weapon pile drivers maybe a little cocaine no I don't think so so we have Soundwave's weapons, so we can fully outfit him. There he goes. And Frenzy's little guns and his pile drivers. Did I say friend? I meant rumble. Now I'm confusing myself. Though they're similar to uh, Frenzy's pile drivers. All right, so yes, this was originally released in this mold as the Netflix version and came with Ravage and Laserbeak. Well, obviously Laserbeak has been recolored into Buzzsaw, and don't complain about this recolor because that's the original, well, it's a recolor. And like I said, the uh, Studio Series version slightly mistransformed. So let's take a look at the deco. We'll put the cassettes aside for the moment. And you know, Soundwave is one of the most popular Decepticons out there. And part of the reason is his little friends because he's got a veritable army inside. So what are the differences between these guys? Well, putting them side by side, the gray appears slightly darker on the Netflix one. The blue seems about the same. Now, luckily there's enough differences in the paint apps that I can tell them apart. This one has a yellow border, whereas this six with the gold, which they both have the gold stripes on the chest. Um, whereas they had removed the red stripe from the Netflix one, they added it back for this guy. Also added the red stripe to his weapon, so you can tell those apart. But overall, it looks exactly the same. I can't really see any differences, but if you don't have the Netflix one, whew, this is a really good one to get because not only is he a great representation of Soundwave, but he comes with three minions instead of two. Yeah, both of them, you press the button. This seems to have a thump. This has more of a thwip. I don't know if that's just because of mold reuse or just they've changed it slightly. Yeah, that's more of a thwip. That's more of a thump. Okay, we're getting into the nitty gritty here. Yeah, paint apps on the legs, the deco on the shoulders, all the same. They both have Decepticon symbols that look pretty much the same. So it's really just the gold trim. And uh, also on his uh, shoulder cannon, they added the red stripe back as well. So not a huge difference, but still a cool figure. So I'm not gonna do pose test on both of them, but let's just quickly go through. I may have I don't even remember if I reviewed him before. Um, he's got a little bit of ankle swivel, very easily can do a full Jean-Claude Van Damme. Now, you have to flip this up in order to accomplish it, but he can kick forward. You have to flip this up to get any kind of height, but he can kick back. Nice side kick, very high, 
and you know, using both, it's really nice. Leg swivel, bends at the knee, about 90 degrees. Twists at the waist, all the way around. Arms can go all the way around. Obviously bends at the elbow. And if I take the gun out, you can see he bends very well at the elbow, like human style. There is a swivel for the arm. The fists themselves do not twist because of the transformation. The head turns around all the way. And that's pretty much it for the posability on this guy. He does have kind of a, almost a battery cover on the back, but that's part of the transformation. And I'm gonna do a nice twist on the turntable of doom. Trust me from the back, there is no difference except, of course the gray in here appears to be a little bit like a shade lighter. As you command, mighty Megatron, but later I'll let you get kicked out of Astro Train. But he is a great representation of the G1, a lot more poseable. His arms can go out to the side as well, and he can shoot up in the air, he can get drunk on Energon if he wants. Overall, great posability. He can put minions in his chest and eject them. So that's pretty cool. Now, this started out as the Siege version, but he was like super heavily retooled, like 70% of him, so that he could become the G1 Soundwave we've always known and loved, who became technically a micro cassette recorder, not a boombox. A lot of people think he's a boombox. He's a micro cassette recorder that was used by a lot of people, attorneys, doctors, whomever, to actually record and dictate and all that kind of stuff. People think he's a, a boombox, but he is not. Oh, by the way, he does have the finger here that, you know, we're like, eject, eject, eject. I'm gonna press my button. So yeah, whereas Blaster became basically a blaster, became a boombox, um, he was a micro cassette recorder. And actually the cassettes that he came with were exactly the size of regular micro cassettes that went into those machines. Now the model, it's apparently a non-existent model. You can't find a real life sound wave shaped micro cassette recorder. That would be so cool, but no. Apparently that was just a made up thing. And they're like, well, it will put play buttons on it and stuff and he'll be fine. I guess most of the shapes of normal micro cassette players didn't lend themselves well to transformation. So I'm pretty sure I remember how to transform him, but I'm gonna just glance at these just to make sure I didn't forget anything about his capabilities. I mean, obviously this gun can become a long gun or a sonic probe or, you know, a sex toy, but I prefer it in the double barrels configuration as his weapon. That's just my preference. You do what you want. And yes, cassettes can go into him. Now the cassette. I'm putting in is not one of his cassettes. That's actually one we're going to be looking at later, which is uh, the actual Studio Series Rumble. So, all right, let's get him into tape deck mode. So there he is in the micro cassette player mode. Now, one thing I've noticed, it just seemed like it was hard to get this leg, the, well, since you twist him around, I think it's just right leg, but get this leg all the way into place. And though everything else snaps in, I don't know if that's a mold thing, if I did something wrong, it just seems a hair out. So not quite as good as I was expecting. Whereas I noticed no such problem with the original Netflix one. So it could be just a slight quality difference. It could be mine slightly defective, you know, things happen. And I'm definitely seeing the difference in the gray. The gray might actually, I don't know if it's from the purported yellowing, the sun damage. I mean, he's not been in the sun, but you know, light damage. Because yeah, there's definitely a, a major difference with the top, but not nearly as much on the sides. So that's paint and not as nearly as much with the uh, arms. So this could be the discoloration that this particular toy is prone to and hopefully does not happen on this. I hope they figured out something to fix it on this one. But yeah, it's the exact same mold. Now the deco, the only things you can notice in this mode is the gold instead of the yellow. And of course the discoloration which I'm starting to suspect is just the discoloration of age that happens with this. But otherwise, they are virtually identical. The blues still look about the same. The Netflix one, it almost looks like it's a shade different, but then I'm like, no, it's not. Super close, super close. So there you have it, looking at them from all angles, and yeah, he's very cool. I'm glad I got the new one, especially since this one seems to be just coloring left and right, but definitely worth having. So let's take a look at Buzzsaw, the new kid on the block. So we really need to zoom in and I'm putting him next to Laserbeak 
Now this is the one that came with the Netflix, which is virtually identical to the one that comes with the bridge set, only the bridge set's a little bit brighter. But obviously the deco is different because this is a different character, but the transformation is the same. And it's very simple. Now one major difference in the deco is Laserbeak here has a Decepticon symbol on his engine, whereas poor Buzzsaw is unadorned there. I don't see a Decepticon symbol anywhere. That's a shame. I mean, he Decepticon and Proud. Oh, on his head. And I just realized, I'm sorry, this is the Siege one. That was embarrassing, but here's the right one. I will swap. So you pretend you didn't see this guy. Well, I mean, he's a nice guy for Decepticon. They actually both have Decepticon symbols on their heads. So my mistake, the deco is very close, just different colors. And there's not too much posability. You can shift the wings a little bit, but it pretty much just flies like this. But it's very nice to finally have Buzzsaw as part of the family after all these years. All right, so I'm not sure how much difference there is between this Ravage and this Ravage. Looking at the deco in tape mode, there's a slight difference. Gray here, so it's a black here, and that is because his legs are black. He's much more black than new one, whereas there's a lot more gray on the original Netflix version. I haven't been measuring the tapes. They're all about one and three quarter inches wide and about an inch tall, so. But yeah, so I'm not gonna have any problem telling these guys apart. But there's not too much we can do in cassette mode other than be like, it's a cassette. Maybe Jazz could transform and drop him in and play some tunes. So let's take a look at his Panther mode. So there he is, a lot more black to him than the original. Though I have to say, I'm thinking this one may very well be also the Siege version. If there was such a thing, I can't remember. Because the head is a little bit different. And I looked and I can't find another one like this one. Eh, maybe it is the correct one. But I think the head just looks a bit different because he doesn't have a gray neck. So there we go. I was worried about nothing. Ravage versus Ravage. Now there is obviously some posability in this form. You can move the legs a little bit. Maybe have him stalking forward. Maybe have him pawing at something. But the deco is mainly the difference. And you're not going to be doing a lot of posing with this guy. But yeah, the, the black definitely makes him look different. The legs being black, I like. So I do think this is a deco improvement on him. Now they both have the same Decepticon symbol on the side and neither of them are in a cage that uh, Hound put them in. So that's a good thing. The head can adjust so he's looking up at Megatron or he's looking down at a human or he's looking straight as he, you know, pulls a kid in a wheelchair out of his house. I mean, what kind of person are you? Okay, you're a Decepticon. Still very cool. I like the new deco. It's worth it. And finally, we have Rumble who in his studio series, more cartoon accurate version is much more just purple. And I'm gonna fix this head because it's kind of distracting to see a face just sticking out of your cassette. But yeah, this is definitely more the colors of the original toy. So pretty cool. Again, not much you can do with him as a cassette, but it's a pretty simple transformation and a pretty cool looking robot. I will say his right foot was a bit of a bitch to get out. This is, I believe the third usage of the mold I wouldn't mind seeing like a enemy repaint though. I don't mind repaints. So there they are side by side. Before I get into the accessories, just want to go over the deco. So this is more movie accurate. This is more toy accurate. He's got the silver on his chest. He's got obviously a dark blue chest. Still got the red and the yellow in the same spots and the uh, silver stripes on his uh, cod piece. I don't know what you're trying to protect, Rumble. You don't have a dick, you just are a dick. But yeah, just the coloration is uh, different. The mold is exactly the same, but while it's nice to see him next to this one, let's see him next to this one. So you can see this is an original and some of them had uh, more gold. So that's where this one's a little lacking. It's using silver, but otherwise very similar look and feel. Of course, with the uh, studio series and this rumble, you can't actually put the gun in his hand or in this case over his hand. So it looks a little bit different and there's no chrome on the weapons. So that's a shame, but still an interesting representation of the original toy that was called Frenzy. Not perfect in every way. Obviously the uh, legs are one solid color, whereas you can see it's split for this guy. And of course he does have something that the original did not. And that is the iconic pile drivers, which are a great addition to this figure. I like them. We'll put them back on in a little bit. Because one thing I didn't go over is the posability of this bot. And he does not have ankle swivels at all. 
he can very easily do a full toes up Jean-Claude Van Damme. Not a problem. Kicking forward, not a problem. Kicking back, not a problem. Very good. Side kick, very high. Even higher if you use both legs. Twisting at the waist, not going to happen. Arms, well, I'll take off his weapon there, but they can go all the way around. They can go off to the side. You can swivel them. What he does not appear to have is an elbow. So that's a kind of shame. No elbow. And the head can obviously, because of part of the transformation, turn all the way around. I will say he's impressive, but I recently reviewed an even smaller Transformer, a third party one from Magic Square. I, I forgot to mention he's got knees, which is good. Nice knees. And he can even swivel. But when you compare it to this guy, who not only has knees and swivels, actually has ankle tilts at his size. Can Jean-Claude Van Damme can kick all, in all directions. The arms can go all the way around. Has an elbow. And instead of having to put his gun on his back, actually goes right into his hand as it did in the show. And his head can even turn. So the only reason I can think of why they did not do something as complex as the Magic Square one is because these are toys for children. This said 16 up, probably a little too fragile for younger kids who might break it, has very small parts, can be choked on, all that kind of stuff. So the Magic Square one, though smaller, is more impressive in its posability and overall function, but still this, this is a cool figure to have. But we'll put back on his uh, pile drivers because they do look very cool. And as you can see, there's a difference in color compared to the studio series one. This is obviously more light blue and purple, which makes sense. Overall, I have to say this set is very cool. I love the homage to the original Rumble, who some people call, still call Frenzy. And I did for just a moment. That was fucking weird. The addition of Budsaw, the much more all black Ravage, and of course, Soundwave himself. So I am digging the slight improvement of Deco on the Soundwave and the fact that he's not discolored at all. I love the Rumble. I love the Buzzsaw. I love them all. I think they're, they're very cool repaints. And if you have the Netflix one, is it worth getting it just for Buzzsaw? Probably, if you're that much of a crazy collector like me. But there are some tweaks, some improvements, and unless you're good at applying a little bit of paint on your Netflix one, this is a good thing to get. So I will uh, put links in the description so you can get this guy. He's basically like leader price, even though he's still a Voyager sized figure and they're making Voyagers smaller than they used to, but you are getting three cassettes, one of which would be a you know studio series repaint. And again, liking the homage to the original toy, but definitely a fun acquisition. And even with the little thing transforming him that it didn't white line up. That could have been me just being very quick and uh, I'll play around with it later. Maybe I can get it to fit a little bit more closely instead of being slightly off. But I think it's a great set, lots of fun, and I hope you're having fun watching these videos. And if you're enjoying this content, by all means, feel free to subscribe. That would be awesome. And while you're mulling this guy over, we actually have a video over here, which is comparisons of the Walmart reissue 40th anniversary Soundwave and Blaster versus the originals. And we will see you next time. As always, have fun and good hunting.